everybody to another exciting Lord Duckman production. Behind me here is another 1974 Stupid Beetle, a Goldfish Windows Stupid Beetle. And we're going to work on some of the rust remediation on the C-pillar here today. So we're going to cut it up and see what's inside of there. It's probably loaded with a bunch of deaf foam. Deaf foam. I can't hear it. Death foam. <laughs> And we're going to scoop that on out of there, and uh, but we're going to see just how bad this rust damage is and how much more we need to cut out of it. But otherwise, well, we might just jump onto the square back a little bit too. The square back is right there. I have a little bit of rust remediation that I've done in there that needs to be sanded down, cleaned up, and ready for the next coat of paint, which actually just about finalizes the interior trunk area. But anyway, we'll get to that later on in this video. So, let's go ahead and start cutting away. So licky likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. And we'll be back right after the intro. It's been a little hard getting uh, recording out here because there was a loud vacuum cleaner in the distance and it sounded like a shop vac, but enormous. Like if you could picture a shop vac the size of an 18 wheeler. That's what I've been hearing, that drone of a on, on the horizon. It's just yeah, driving me nuts. But what I want you guys to hear is the crispiness. I don't know if you can hear it, especially not with the cars passing, but this is real crunchy. So that means all this through here is rusted. It makes a very, very nice crunch. However, over here, no crunching whatsoever. So this is where we're gonna start our cuts. Down here, no crunching. Up here, we're crunching. So I think we're gonna take out a little section about this big. And then from here to here, we're probably gonna cut that out. I'll draw some lines here, just so we know where we're going for guides. And, well, I guess we'll see what turns up that's inside of there. And then we'll see just how much worse it is up underneath. Check me out. I'm gonna run a grinder without a guard. Because Duckman, you're gonna die. I still haven't died yet. <laughs> Escapees. What's going on over here? Uh huh. You two don't belong out here. No, you don't. Come on, go back in your yard. Go back in your yard. Come on. Come on. They're only two months old, so they're not that bright yet. They try to like, run through stainless steel fences and stuff. <laughs> Come on, guys, go back in the yard. There you go. Little troublemakers. I shouldn't say little, they're bigger than Boomer. At two months old. Right, Boom? You're so small compared to them. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so much for trying to get back to work. Go away, Boomer. Go away. Get out of here. Go keep them girls in line. That's your job. You're the man of the yard. <laughs> Well, I love the piece that I cut away. It appears that uh, not all of this was rust through. This was rust through. This was rust through. This spot was not. So that came from the surface. Same with this here, unless it bled sideways underneath the metal. Yeah, it's definitely rust through here and here, but the rest of it, not so much. Well, that means it's probably not as bad as we thought it might have been, and that uh, attacking it now as we have, we might have actually avoided it getting a whole lot worse. This foam is uh, very brittle. Usually it's more spongy than this. This stuff is absolute caca. Yeah, look at that. It's actually hard. Some people say, you know, just dissolve it with acetone. But you know, I've never experimented with that. I don't even know if it'll work. 
we'll give it a shot before the video's over, I guess. We'll save a chunk of it and see if, uh, if it'll dissolve. As it would be nice just to spray acetone up in this area and just clear it all out, wouldn't it? But I don't think it's that easy. Anyway, I'm going to have to get in here with a, a screwdriver or a pick of some sort and start picking this all out. About to make a big mess here on the ground. All right, here we go. smelly. It's hard to describe how it smells. It's kind of musty, but kind of, uh, kind of industrial smelling. Yeah, it looks like we don't have that much further up in here. It was mostly just from here to here. But down in this section, it goes way down, possibly down uh, below the crescent vent. Still some in here in another chamber. Pick out as much of it as we can. See what's behind this. I cut that out in two pieces on purpose because I wanted a little more room where I might even be able to get my hand in there. Get the foam out. There we go. Look at that. Big old chunks. It's like Christmas morning. Oh, fresh baked Christmas cookies from 50 years ago. Man, there's a lot of this in here. Often this stuff will just fall out one big giant chunk because it's released, because it's sticking, well, was sticking to the surface, but when the surface of the metal turned to rust, it detached, it scaled off. So the foam often comes out as one big piece. Not the case anymore. This is a, a later model foam anyway. The earlier foam was a little more spongy than this. Well, this is the uh, the hardest foam that I think I've encountered. But to be honest, usually I remove death foam from 68, 69, 70, somewhere in there. It's not often I touch a, a beetle that's this new. This new, I'm saying that about a almost 50 year old car. 50 next year. Fangled contraptions with their McPherson strut suspension and bubbled windshields. Man, what do I know? Working on early cars from the 50s. Oh, man, you don't know nothing. 
I'm sure you just get in here with a shop vac and start sucking this in. You might even have to cut that hole a little bigger. You know, I'm looking and I don't see any rust at all around these crescent vents. In fact, let's pull that crescent vent out and see if there's any rust under it at all. The owner suggested that, uh, yeah, he suggested that he wanted to have these removed so he wouldn't get any rust underneath it, but you know what? There's no rust in there at all anyway. What might be wise to do is just seal these things up really good so that way the water can't get into them. Maybe even seal this up to trap the water from getting in there or at least give it a, an easier way to get out because there is a lip here that will trap it. And that'll cause this to rust and then it gets a pinhole and then the water just goes straight down into the car this one is not not that way i'll have to talk to the owner about that and see what uh, see what he thinks because you know what i don't think we should cut that out we'll keep original for original sake even though i'm not a big fan of crescent vents maybe we should just leave them boomer again really come here you and he's back hey this boy go away <laughs> <laughs> I love you, but no. All right, you can tell by the foamy action inside of there that I've treated it with my world-famous cat piss. You can find that stuff down below. The link's in my video description if you're interested in some for yourself. A little piece of foam got in there. Anyway, it will neutralize the rust that's in there. I wire brushed it out. I got as much of the foam out as I could, which I think is all. I mean, I don't see any in there anymore. I mean, maybe just a little freckle of it here and there. Maybe there's a little piece. <laughs> but anyway, the best way to get it out was just to uh, dig it out with some screwdrivers. And as you can see, it's now all over the ground. It's all in my trash can. And there's a ton of it inside my shop vac. That really did a good job. I wonder how much of it fell down inside the car. Some. <laughs> Doesn't look like a whole lot, but some did. Yeah, a little bit ended up in here. Came through the little holes. They're not rust holes, they're just, you know, body drilled holes. Anyway. Yeah, it's all down here. Usually the, the foam makes its way all the way to this far forward. So when I blew out with the compressor, it pushed all that out. All right, well, we're gonna let that dry overnight. Um, I might hit it again with some acid again tomorrow just to make sure it gets in all the nooks and crannies where it's supposed to go. I'm gonna talk to the owner about this piece here because this has no rust in it. I did manage to flake a piece of paint off of it. We know I should put some acid on that because it looks like it's bare metal. But I don't see any rust in there at all. And I haven't pulled off the one on the other side. Let's see if it's uh, if it's the same way. Because if these things are both good for the sake of originality, yeah, no rust. These things are spotless. So I'm going to suggest that he keeps these things as they were factory. Look at dust on everything, man. <laughs> this camera lens was covered in it too. I mean, everything was just covered in yellow. I'm sure I am also. <laughs> Can you tell? I don't know, I can't tell by looking in the camera screen. And there's that shop vac in the distance again. You hear it? Anyway, uh, okay. Well, that's where we're leaving off on this one until tomorrow. Let me put this vent back in here so I don't lose it. Here we go. Okay, so that's going to stop off on this one. Now, in here, I ran a sander around in there and leveled off all the places where the seam sealer was a little blobby or a little bit high so everything's nice and flat again and then I went in here and uh, I had wire wheeled everything out already so it was time to hit it with the cat piss and that's why everything looks nice and wet all shiny so I cat pissed the entire inside of this here um, I'm gonna close this up tonight I might leave a gap just a little bit the little air in here because I do want it to dry as best as possible that acid won't hurt anything else if it does evaporate you know it might stick to the glass or something to make smeary marks but it, it um, it will not damage the metal. It actually produces a, uh, a coating of iron phosphate, which is essentially rust proof. It will not rust, it's an inert compound, kind of like iron oxide is, but instead it's iron phosphate. It's not something that'll continue to leach or creep or cause the metal to flake off unless you continue to expose it to phosphoric acid, which of course does not appear in the environment uh, to adequate levels to have done that anyway. We'll leave this propped open a little bit. I'll put a little tennis ball or something underneath the lid. But that's going to square that one up, and it's just about ready for paint. I'm going to pick up my tools around here and wrap up for the day, because I think we're just about done. Um, not worried about any rain until uh, about another three or four days from now, so hopefully I'll have this all filled back in and covered up. 
There was a little rust hole here, by the way. I'm still deciding what I want to do to that. It's a little hard to get up inside of there because there's a structure behind it. Um, but I did get all the rust off it. It has been treated. So I might just put a little bit of filler on it and be done with it. Uh, we'll see. A little bit of seam sealer, um, not seam sealer, uh, panel bond actually might go a long way. In fact, I might even panel bond these. You see this is a little wavy for me poking in there, so I might cut the hole a little bigger where it's nice and flat still. And then uh, make a panel, um, flange the edges of it, and kind of work it in there with a little bit of panel bond around the edges of it, and then using a magnet, hold it in place, and see if that holds. And I don't see any reason why I wouldn't. There's no rust on the inside of this at all. I don't feel any scaling. The only rust we had was where the holes were. I mean, that's it. That is it. This thing is in such good shape that, like I said, I'm not going to recommend cutting out these crescent vents. That's probably just a bad idea. Keep this car original. It'll keep its value. And unless he really, really, really just wants them gone, in which case, I'm not even going to cut them. I think what we're going to do is just going to make a patch panel that uh, just covers it and we'll panel bond it in and be done with it. That way he gets it back nice and fast, it won't be too expensive and it'll last a long, long time without having to do a ton of cut and welding, grinding and all the other nonsense. So I guess that's it for today. So like you like, you comment and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. And uh, hey, new merch by the way. Well, this is one of the old merch shirts, but uh, we got some new shirts if you're interested in them. Store.DuckShit.net or just go to DuckShit.net and click on the merch link. That'll take you to where you need to go. Thanks a lot, you guys. Really appreciate you watching. We'll be back hopefully this weekend with a small engine weekend or a Saturday or Sunday or something video. I haven't done a HIPAA commercial in a little while and I haven't complained. I'm under contract for several months out, so it's not a big deal, I guess. <laughs> All right. Get that out the way. i got to sweep the floor out here. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Oh, you know what? Before we go, let me show you one more thing. Almost forgot. Here's some of the death foam. While I was uh, working on everything else, I started soaking it in various compounds, and I tried starting with gasoline, which only made the foam white. I started out uh, after that. After that, I used some acetone. It did nothing to it. Tried some xylene. Did nothing to it. Tried some mineral spirits. Did nothing to it. Then I started soaking it in some um, phosphoric acid. Of course, did nothing to it. Um, water is a joke. Don't even bother. But I soaked it in some brake fluid, and it looks like it's getting a little softer, but it certainly hasn't broken down. Now this is a piece of death foam from an earlier year car, and this turned to muck. It hasn't broken it down, but it certainly weighed it down, and it just turned into, it's like the consistency of wet snow. It's just, it's kind of gross. Yuck. So anyway, there are two kinds of death foam you find in a car. I forget what the cutoff year is on it. There's the harder stuff that you find in the later models and the earlier, more like kitchen sponge kind of stuff you find in the earlier ones. Anyway, nothing, any kind of compound or household solid that I have here would break it down. Nothing would, so don't even bother. <laughs> I mean, unless you have something that's not on my list that you'd like to try, but if those didn't do it, I can pretty much assure you that nothing else will. One of the other options is maybe fire. And maybe you can get in and you can burn it out. It won't burn for too long. Scoop out as much as you can, I guess, and then get in there and just, you know, burn it. <laughs> Hope you don't warp the panels too much. <laughs> I'm not going to do it, and I'm not going to tell you to do it, but, hey, that might be another option to get it out there quickly. All right, well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Whew.